All right, Bren, what do you have for me? Okay, so the bad hygiene mod. Animal dung and, uh, Bren, this is full of nothing but poop jokes. What was that? Ah, I see. Carry on. Okay, seriously, need to hire some new exterminators. Swear, the hive is getting worse every video. Wait, we're, we're la- Oh. So today's theme is crappy mods, but seems my writer missed the mark. So today we are going to talk about mods that involve dung. Yeah, I don't know why I've, I don't know I'm recording this. We're just, let, let's just get along with it and the Like seriously, why am I recording this? If I know this is the wrong video, I want- all right, that it makes sense, okay? It makes sense. So yeah, and because I know they totally would want to be associated with this video, how about showing our favorite shop sponsor? Prepare carefully, yeah. So before we go into the main mod of this video, let's talk about what might be the best worst mod ever. The poop mod. The poop mod. What can I say about this literally crappy mod? You get a poop biome, the ability to poop, the ability to make stuff out of said poop, and of course, the poop eater trait. You know, I wanted to make our videos more mature, so we aren't just lame poop jokes, but here I am. Yeah, let's move on before I feel sick. Of course, the animal dung mod, as the name implies, animals now will drop dung piles based on their size and level of hunger. Herbivores drop more, of course, as many cow farmers could attest to. Though, while this is a silly and gross mod, it does have a good bit of use in the early game, as dung piles will dry out and become fuel source substitute for stuff like campfires, wood generators. Yes, a base powered by cow dung. What am I doing with my life? All right, let's not beat around the bush. What you want to see is us talk about Dub's Bad Hygiene, one of the earlier of mods when RimWorld was still in beta, and even today it still holds up. To those who don't know, it gives pawns a hygiene level that adds more complexity to the game. Starting off, you are going to need a water supply. This is simple enough to set up, just need a pump, a water tower to store it, some pipes, and a power source to work the pumps. There you go, a simple supply of water to get you started. Obviously, sources of water like rivers, lakes, and the ocean are better sources of water, but for the most part, you will find water underground. Now, why should you care about hygiene? Why not let your pawns just do their normal thing without dealing with showers or something? Well, you will regret that for sure, pawns who don't bathe get penalties for social skills they are more likely to get sick oh and definitely you will be getting food poisoning due to your chef not washing his hands seriously people if you aren't washing your hands before handling food then get the hell out of my colony that stuff be gross it'd be real gross Get the heck out of my colony. So, early on, you will only really be able to make a wash basin and a latrine, which is basically an outhouse. Definitely roughing it because that latrine will get full and need to have all the waste moved away, or you can be a jerk and kick it and make a mess or burn it in a campfire, which I should mention is a crappy idea because of contaminations in the air near the fire source. It is still a fuel source in emergency, but again, contaminations. Yeah, don't kick the stuff. First off, that's a dick move to the environment. Second, you actually can use the stuff later, so just store it somewhere. Put it away. Preferably away from all your nice stuff, but I think that goes without saying. As for the wash basin, you will have to restock the water when it's dirty, which again goes without saying, but hey, gotta pad out the video so YouTube won't ignore this video. So what if you want something better to clean yourself? Perhaps you want indoor plumbing. Well, you're going to need a few more things to have the plumbing work. First off, provided you did the normal research, you need a toilet, preferably three. One for male colonists, one for female, and one for mixed, so you won't have to back up flow. Next, your proper, not primitive water well needs to be connected to water tower for toilet you don't need a heater, but having one can still be a good for future stuff. Finally, an outlet to pump out the waste, and you've got two choices. One pipe going above ground, or being pumped into water. That was a mouthful. You know, either option is pretty bad, but if you must pump the sewage out somewhere, and you don't have a treatment plant, the river is the better option. If it's downriver, the closer to the map exit, the better a stain of water can go into your water tower and hurt your colonists. Same with sewage on the ground. Colonists, you walk through it, lose hygiene, and are more than likely to catch something nasty. Saying that as well, you really don't want to end up looking like a Captain Planet villain if you pump waste into the ecosystem, right? Anyone actually remember this show, by the way? Fun fact, they actually have a villain called Duke Nukem. Seriously, not making it up. Apogee Software actually had to change the name in the 90s action game star Duke Nukem to Duke Nuke Um in case of copyright issues, which never really came up. Man, the 90s was weird. If anyone else remembers a weird show from the 90s, let me know in the comments. I know my writer Brent sure loves those shows. He really, really does. He, 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 he sends me Discord messages about these shows all the time. All the time. So, on to heated water, pawns always appreciate a good shot 
shower or bath to clean themselves up, but a cold cleanup is not fun, let me tell you. So do the same setup as before with something to heat up the water, and you are golden if things are connected. Though in a pinch, you can put a campfire near a tub to heat it up, which if you ask me, is kinda a weird thought. Yeah, you got that. So if your pawns have a nice warm bath or shower that's going to reduce stress out there on the rim, it's certainly cheaper than therapy or drugs or therapists on drugs. By the way, if your water tower supply of water gets tainted by pollution like raw sewage or toxic fallout, dead bodies or graves, or even oil spills from Rimfeller, what you want to do is drain the water in the tower and clean up whatever is causing the problem. The alternative thing you want to do is make a water treatment plant and attach it to the pipe system. It will drain a lot of the power and sometimes you might need more than one running to clean it all, but it's all in the name of good hygiene and who doesn't want to be squeaky clean. There are a few more things to talk about with this mod, like how if you go into the mod settings you can include thirst. So now your pawns need to eat and drink to keep from getting dehydrated, and yes, eating can in theory offset thirst, just not as good as setting up a few water fountains. Still a neat little add-on if you want more realism in your games. But wait, there's more! This mod includes heating and cooling technology. Now you can get out of the dark ages and enjoy the wondrous invention that is central cooling and heating. All you have to do for cooling is set up the outdoor cooler which sets up all the cooling supply, then like a source of power you pipe the cool air throughout the base. It's not quite as strong as just a normal AC unit, however you do have the benefit of raiders not going for that and smashing their way into your base. This mod also includes a ceiling fan which acts as a powered passive cooler, even comes with a light. By the way, ever look at a ceiling fan in motion and then for a brief moment you can track the blades like they go slower? Kinda weird. Hey Brent, why do you keep using me as a mouthpiece for your weird musings? Yes, of course, centralized heating, which is perfect for the base cold winter nights. Like the cooling system, you have a centralized unit to supply the heat. In case of heat, a water heater and radiator. Just hook the radiator up to the water system in your rooms and you got heat. Granted, the more radiators you use, you will need more heat water boilers. By the way, neat thing about this is, if the hot water is shut off, the radiators do keep their heat going for a little while afterwards, meaning in the event of a power outage, you aren't out of power for a bit. I like that little detail. Another cool feature is the sprinkler system, which has two uses. One hydrating your crops every morning so they speed up fertility or as fire sprinklers in your base Either way you want to hook them up to the water line and make sure you got enough water in storage Just think last thing you want is to use up all your water for your corn And now someone is pissed that the toilet won't flush <laughs> Corn's more important than your poo poo's going down the drain, okay? The corn matters, okay? Finally we have fertilizer Yeah, bet you thought I'd forget about the storage room full of poo, didn't you? No, I did not. No. Now we are going to turn it into fertilizer. Can be used to improve crop yield even further than with sprinklers. That's right, we will now have a dung empire powered by poo. Yes, poo! <laughs> So to get this brown sludge, you need a septic tank, and then have people haul the stuff out and put it into a compost. The compost you make isn't permanent. It takes about a year before it needs to be replaced, but hey, that year is going to be full of nice crops. But guess what? There is more you can do with that stuff. Now let's say you don't want your crops covered in the pile of ponds poo. You could use the bio solid chem fuel mod and take all that sludge and turn it into chem fuel, which can be turned into mortar shells, which in turn means that you are using poo to destroy your enemies. This might be the best worst thing we ever done on this show. Wow. I suppose there isn't much left to talk about except having a solid silver toilet that's cleaner than steel. <laughs> Introducing the clean porcelain mod, so now silver provides a cleanliness bonus of 0.35 for anything made of it, meaning you could have an entire clean base of silver. Why not a gold toilet? <laughs> because it's too soft. Seriously, you could probably crush a toilet seat made of gold with pure thought alone with how soft and malleable gold can be. Nope, silver is the best option for your fancy bathroom fit for noble. Yeah, all right. If I'm being honest, we just include this mod to round things out and end on something, well, not as disturbing as in the beginning, you know? Oh god! I just got done brain bleaching myself, huh? <laughs> Bren, take my mind off things with a funny meme. Congrats, you are a surprise organ donor! Oh yes, healthy raiders lives do matter. Raider lives matter, we need more surprise organ donors. <laughs> it's like the kidnapping joke where we just call it surprise adoption. That's so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible. Ah, <laughs> that's uh, funny. That was quite the palate cleanser. Hopefully next time Bresden doesn't mess up that order and hopefully you guys found this entertaining and if you did leave a like, check out another video and maybe even send a couple of silver our way to our Patreon. After all, I need to have a solid silver toilet seat. I mean, pay, pay, pay my totally not expendable workers. Seriously though, thanks to everyone who supported us. I'll see you in the next video. Also, everybody that was in the Patreon, name roll! Everybody that worked on the video, name roll! We got credit rolls around here. Yeah, we're cool people. All right, cool. So 
subscribe, hit the bell button so you don't miss another video, comment your favorites down below, hit that like button, join the gosh darn discord because that place needs more people talking. There's 400 people in there and it's like quiet. Get, go join the discord, dang it.